If you're anything like me, you found a sale on potatoes and thought it would be a fantastic idea to go ahead and can it. But then you tasted it and it's weird. So I'm gonna show you our favorite recipe that we have around here to help those potatoes be a little bit more of a uh, palatable texture. That recipe is shepherd's pie. It is one of my husband's favorites and one of the only ways that he will willingly consume canned potatoes. What we're gonna need for this recipe is a pint-sized jar of potatoes, two cans of ground beef. Normally in this recipe, you would use like the peas and the corn and the, the carrots, you know, the frozen bags, but we're gonna substitute that for some canned carrots and some canned green beans. And then we're also gonna need some beef broth, paprika, we're using smoked paprika, salt, pepper, tomato paste, and whatever else comes up as we roll along with this. You can also use cheese in the topping, but I think we're out of cheese, so unless I find some, we're just gonna omit it. Maybe add some butter. You're gonna have to excuse the odd cooking angles. We are in the middle of kombucha fest, and my whole house is covered in kombucha, so. I got limited space here. <laughs> the first thing that we gotta do with this is warm up our potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and boil these for a little while because it really doesn't matter at this point and let them kind of simmer in the pot while we're getting everything else ready. While that's going on, we need to cook up our ground beef. The texture of canned ground beef is also a little bit wonky for lack of a better word. Uh, it's kind of soft. If you cook this in the pan and kind of crisp it up, you saute it in the pan, it kind of helps a little bit with the, with the texture. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and add the flour into it so that we can get a nice thickening going on. If you're avoiding gluten, go ahead and substitute some other form of thickener that is gluten-free. I can't think of any off the top of my head because I'm just rolling off the cuff, but if you're gluten-free, you know what I'm talking about. Then once that has thickened a bit, go ahead and add in the canned veggies drained of course. We don't want to add these too soon because they are canned and they as such they are going to be a little bit on the mushy side and we want to preserve the texture as much as possible. Then you're also going to want to add in the tomato paste. Let that cook for about a minute until it starts to smell kind of roasted. Then pour in the red wine or as we are substituting beef broth. If it's a little bit too thick add in a little bit of extra beef broth at this stage and then transfer it to your baking dish. Then we're gonna drain the potatoes that we've had simmering for a little while and smash them all up until they look like mashed potatoes. Add some butter, add some cheese, add whatever you like to add to your mashed potatoes and put them on top of your meat mixture. Actually, that is not enough potatoes, so we're gonna do a second one. Make sure we get good coverage. That's more like it. And we're gonna wanna bake this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or until the top starts to look a nice golden brown. Remember, everything that we put in this casserole dish is already nice and hot, so it's not gonna take as long as it would otherwise. And when the time is up, it's time for a taste test. Looks like we're all baked. I went ahead, I just omitted the flour altogether to make sure that I could have some. I can't eat the potatoes. So we're gonna roll that back just to get enough of a taste. I did make this for my husband. He's gonna be super happy when he gets home uh, from work and he just has a nice meal ready for him to heat up. So let's give this a taste. Mm. All the different flavors, the spices. If you're gonna make this, you can totally feel free to play with the spices however you want to play with them. And if you do add the flour, you wanna add a little bit more broth to it to make it a little bit soupier so that you can thicken it up and it becomes almost like a stew. I just chose not to do that so that I can have some dinner myself. It's so strange that that is so flavorful when I put very few spices in it. Some good stuff. This video is the final video that I'm making for the Make It March collaboration hosted by Lisa over at Sutton's Days. All the channels that are taking part in this collaboration showing you tons of different ways that you can use your canned foods. I will link them all for you down below. Make sure you check them all out. Watch all of the videos in the collaboration and comment on them so that you can be entered to win a pressure canner on March 31st. Lisa's gonna be going live and she's gonna draw a random comment from a random video and that person's gonna win a pressure canner. So increase your odds by watching and commenting on all of the videos. If you wanna see the last video that I made for Make It March, be sure to check out this video right here. That'll answer all your questions and give you all types of inspiration. Peace out, sauerkraut.